Hey everybody, this is round one of, or session one, I should say, of Realm of the Ice Witch of the Dungeoneer game by Atlas Games. I started playing and swiftly ran out of room on the table, so I'm going to probably have to adjust. I, I've reset everything, starting again, but I'll, I'll, I'll have to adjust the layout of everything as I play, as, as the as the board builds out. So for now, we'll just keep in mind that I have two quests. One is to defeat a frigid demon in the frozen canyon, or the glacier canyon, and one to find Emmy by rolling a seven or more on one d6, where uh, I add a further number for every space I am away from the entrance. So I'm going to draw up to three cards. That's at the beginning of the game. So I have three cards in my hand, and that's the maximum hand size. I have a Destroy Demon spell, a Potion of Heroism, and another Potion of Heroism. So let's look at Potion of Heroism really quick. Your hero has a plus one level until the end of uh, the turn. Well, that'll be very useful, uh, because a plus one level for Onoku means that instead of a bonus of one magic, she has a bonus of three magic. That'll be really useful. Now those are instant spell. These are all instant spells. So I can move, the, once I use them, I discard them. That's, that's, the, that's an instant spell. Okay, so on my turn, I have, because of Onoku's movement speed of two, I have essentially two action points. Now, again, this is my own variant of the Dungeoneer rules. that I've adapted them for solo play. So none of this is written down anywhere. This is just how I play it when I'm playing solo. I, I may try a non-solo game at some point and play it rules as written, but this is, this is how I usually play, so it's how I'm playing it. A round progresses from left to right. You'll notice that I have this fancy token here. I'll explain that in a moment. So first round, first turn, I draw a map card. And the map card has black boxes at the top and bottom. It has to be accessible by something, by, by some square. So I'll set it down here. Even though it's not accessible, going east and then south, I could go south and then east, and it is accessible because there's a white gate and a white gate. Okay, so that's, that's the start of the turn. Now, for the second part of the turn, there's this winterize spell, which exists only in, in, this, in this set. Other sets don't have special cards. Some sets do. There's a weather system for one of them, for instance. This one happens too, so I, I need to account for it. And the idea is that I have to roll a, a single die, and on a four or greater, that space, that map space, freezes over. And I'll be using freezing tokens to represent that. This token here, which is actually a painted mini from um, Mysterium, from a Mysterium set, this is going to be my cardinal direction finder. There are cards that require my character to do something in a quote-unquote random direction. And because there's no one else here playing with me to determine what direction to do that in, this token will be the marker for that. So currently, if something moves my character in a direction, it will move northward. Every turn, this token will move across the board, thereby changing sort of what that direction would be, what a, a random location might be. So that's, that's the purpose of that. It's, it's non-interactive. I won't be interacting with it, but it might determine something during my turn. Okay, so that's, that's this. She's on a frozen, Onoku is already on a frozen space. There's this little frozen icon. 
so I don't have to roll for the winterized spell. It's just not applicable here. In fact, I think are all of the locations why is that upside down? Uh, are all the locations frozen? No, there is. There are a couple of non-frozen spaces, but she's not there, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so on my turn, I have two action points because her movement speed is two. And uh, she can choose to do any number of things, including moving, in, uh, traveling, including learning a spell, moving it from her hand to her pack. And that's really all that's applicable right now. I will point out... Oh, did I? Yeah, I did. Uh, I will point out that I can't really do my quests yet. The Frigid Demon doesn't... The, 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 the location of the frigid demon does not exist yet. There's no, I don't know where the frozen glacier, the glacier canyon is. And I'm not far enough away from the entrance that I can find Emmy. So I need to get away from the entrance is, is really the, the point. So I guess I'll use my action movement, my, my, my action point to travel one space. Now, unfortunately, there's a little notation here in this gateway saying that in order to make a move through this portal I must make a six or greater check, movement check on the die. Well, I have two movement, so I will roll a die and hope to get a four or better. I got a two, so I'm not able to move there. So that's one action point gone. For my second action point, I will try to move there again. <laughs> and, and again, nothing nothing happens. That's fine. So that's just, that's my turn. Two actions. And so we'll reset. New turn. So I'll draw a map card. And I get a grim juncture. So I'll just put that here because there's, there's room for it down here. Over here. And that's good because this way I can get maybe I'll I'll start moving this way instead. Maybe the maybe the avenue southward is not such a great place to go. Winterized spell. Well, I'm still in a frozen space. I wasn't able to move last turn, so um Yeah, I guess I'll just I'll just attempt to move one square. Now I could stop here or I could take another I could use my other action point to continue traveling. Unfortunately, there's a lock on this gate as well and I need a 5 or better movement check. So I'll roll this and this time I do want a 3 or better. And I get a 1. So I don't move from that square. However, I did move this turn. And when I move and end in a in a, a in a location, I have to resolve the peril uh, cost of that map location. There are th there's a three peril value here in the red skull icon. So before I do that, I'm going to take a look at the special instructions on this map card, and it says that demons have a bonus to all attacks here equal to the level of the highest level hero. So that's that's, that's Onoku. She's level one. So if a demon attacks me on this space, it's going to get a plus one to its attacks. That's too bad. Three peril means that I have to draw up to three peril cards until I equal three peril points. Well, I guess luckily, maybe, this card happens to have three peril. So this is the only card I have to draw this turn. That's a good thing. Uh, unfortunately, three peril usually is not a great. <laughs> it's usually pretty dangerous. So let's find out what the co what what I have to do. Traps affect all heroes. Okay, well I'm the only hero around, so uh, there's a plus four threat on frozen. So this is going to get a bonus of plus four. Demons have a plus one melee this turn. Luckily, I didn't have to draw any cards beyond this one, so so there's no chance right now, at least, of a demon occurring. If I fail this this test, I inflict one wound. 
and I get tipped. If I succeed, I gain a glory point, which again isn't relevant because the, after this card, the, the turn is going to be over and glory points only last during a turn. The point of this card is over here on the on the left, I can I, I need to make there's a threat of of a movement threat of four or greater. I need to make a movement check on one die of two or more. Because again, I have two movement rating, so I I'm already halfway there. Uh, except that it's frozen. So actually, it's a plus four to frozen. So that's this is actually an eight. <laughs> so I need I need a six. I got a five. That's actually closer than I closer than I thought. Oh, you know what? I could have actually I could have spent I could have spent potion of heroism and had a, a bonus to my roll of uh, making my movement three. I absolutely should have done that, but I didn't. So I'll take my, my lumps. It's five. So I, I take one wound, and I get tipped. So tipped in Dungeon Near, essentially in solo play at least, it essentially means that I'm I'm I've I'm prone. I've fallen down, and I need to use one action point to pick myself up. Okay, so new turn. Draw a card. Irelian Hot Springs. Pay a movement and pay one glory, and I can recover one health. That's pretty good. That's nice. Maybe I will put that here. Oh wait, nope, that won't work. Well, I could put it here. Oh, and I've I've failed. I've forgotten to move this piece. So it was supposed to move here here the first turn and then I think there was another turn in there so it's here. Uh and then it it it, it cannot be on the same space as a hero. So I could move it here but then that would that would get weird so yeah i'll just i'll just leave it there for now it's not a big deal i've just drawn a map card i need to account for the winterized spell but i'm on a frozen space so again i don't need to make a check for that now i have my two action points to spend as a hero so i will pick myself up for one action and for my second action I I mean I could move into the Grim Juncture, which has a super inviting name and a threat, a plus two threat uh, trap. Oh no, it's it's not a trap. It is simply it it get it it grants traps a plus two threat. Okay, that that's that's okay. That's not as bad as I thought. So I could move there. But I mean, honestly, the Aurelium Spring kind of sounds like a nice place to visit. And certainly the peril points of it lo is lower than the Grim Juncture. It just makes sense. And there's not a lock on the gate. It just makes sense for me to, to move up one. Now, if I pay one movement speed, well, I don't have that, unfortunately. And one glory, then I recover one health. I don't have that this turn. But I'll have it the next turn, so I, I know that at least the next turn I'll be able to, um, to regain some health, which will be good. Really good, because I'm now on a peril. Uh, I'm on a new card. I've used my action point to move this turn. So I need to now draw a peril card up to two. Okay, this is a four. Again, that, the good news is that I don't have to draw any more. The bad news is that there's an arctic shift <laughs> happening. These are actually really cool and exactly why this token exists. Relocate the, a frozen target space, which this is, to any legal location. So that's, that's like I say, that's exactly why this, this token exists. Uh, because under normal circumstances, uh, I believe the other player 
would be imposing this upon me. There is no other player. So what I'm going to do is pick up this frozen map card. Oops. This frozen map card and swap it with with the entrance, which is exactly where that token was. Uh, and my player is now over here instead of over there. Functionally, in this instance, that doesn't that actually doesn't change anything because my goal was just to get farther away from the entrance. And so having swapped places with it really hasn't changed anything for me. Normally, like if this token is not on the entrance card, then, then it can have possibly really bad effects. But that, that wasn't so bad this early in the game. So that was the peril card. We've, we've resolved it. So now it's turn three, I think, right? No, it's turn, who knows what it is. It's the next turn. So now, oh, I, that's how I could determine what turn it is. One, two, three extra cards. So this is turn four. Polar Forest. All monsters have a bonus to all melee equal to the, and threats equal to the level of the highest level. Okay. Trying to think of where I want to place this. I think it would be most beneficial to me for me to place it really, really far away. Because the farther I get away from, from the entrance card, the better it is for me to then find Emmy. Am I on a frozen space? Yes, I'm on a frozen space. So again, I don't have to resolve anything for the Winterize spell. The, the Ice Witch is not having a lot of fun today because um, it turns out that the Realm of the Ice Witch is already pretty well frozen. Yeah, so I've got Potions of Heroism, which I sh really should remember to use. And I've got Destroyed Demon, which I, I'm going to ideally save for the Frigid Demon. But I still can't take on this Frigid Demon yet because there's no, there's no Glacier Canyon. Now, the question is where do I want to go? I could move down here. You know what I'm going to do? I think I'm going to spend a potion of heroism to gain a level for this turn. So instead of having a two movement speed, I now have a three movement speed and a three magic bonus which I think is going to be useful to get past this stupid lock. Uh, so this was what, the six, that's a six plus. So I'm going to roll a movement check now with a bonus of three. Uh, so I need a three or greater on this die, and I rolled a one. Well, that's okay. Um, what I could do right now, since I'm here, is pay one of my movements. Oh, wait, oh no, I have three movements. So I've got one. Oh, and I just spent a card, didn't I? Oh, that doesn't matter. That's not a movement. Um, okay, so... Yeah, so three action points. So I could, I could try that again. I could try to move down to that space again. There we go. Six plus three is nine. That's greater than six. Six would have done it anyway. Okay, so I've moved down to the shadowy plains, and I think uh, I could move over to the Grim Juncture, or the Grim, Grim Strait. Oh, so that, that card can't be placed there. That card has to be placed there in order to be uh, accessible. Of course, it's off camera, so I'll have to move the whole board to the left uh, eventually. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll, I think I'll move with my last, my final action. I will, I will move over here. It's a lower threat level, 
there is a pit, a pit trap, that requires a seven or greater movement check. And that's this is kind of the time to do that because I've got that plus three bonus until the end of the turn. Well, five does not beat a seven. So unfortunately, I am tipped and wounded one. That's a bad sort of condition to be in now that I have to draw peril cards up to three uh, points of peril. A blizzard, five peril. So that's not great. Your hero uh, in a wilderness space is relocated to an adjoining space of your choice. Oh, okay, this is not bad. All heroes on a frozen must overcome a physical threat. Well, I just moved into this space and haven't had a chance to do a winterize check because that happens at the end of the round, at the beginning of each round. So currently, I'm not fro I'm not on a frozen space. I don't have to make that check for for the physical threat. So that's a good thing. So really, the only thing that happens here is that I get shunted over to some other space. Card rule as written <laughs> uh, means I could technically game the system uh, and use it to move into a space that has a lock on its gate, but that seems like that would be cheating uh, myself. So I will just move myself back. Actually, well, again, so this is why this token exists. Because in theory, that's supposed to govern where I move my token. In this particular case, though, there's a, a black gate to the north. So I can't move towards the token, really. So the, my only two choices are here, which is going to ultimately... No, this is... Yeah, this is the correct choice. That's the harder choice, because it's a th greater threat level. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. So that's, I've been moved out of the space that I was trying to move towards. And that's fine. I've lost some health. Oh yeah, and I'm tipped because of the pit still. I'm down a card. <laughs> Things are kind of actually not looking great. But I do feel like I'm, I'm all right. Now, I'm going to... Take one more turn this, this session. There's a juncture with lots of open spaces. That's good. Uh, I guess I'll just put that way up here. I'll move all the cards over later. Uh, I'm on a frozen space already, so again, the Winterize Curse doesn't do anything uh, at all. doesn't impose any kind of a disadvantage on me. And I have two action points to spend, so I'm going to spend one action point to stand back up. And then I'm going to spend the other action point to finally do a search for poor lost Emmy. I am one, two, three spaces away from the entrance. So I'm going to make a single die roll of a d6 plus three in hopes of getting a seven or greater to find Emmy. Four, five, six, seven. I have found Emmy. This is Emmy. To find Emmy, roll seven or greater on one die while on a frozen space. Yep, everything's satisfied there. Adding plus one to the roll for each space you are from the entrance. Each search uses one movement. Or, uh, that's what I did, yeah. When you find Emmy, place a token on the quest card to represent her. And then get back to an entrance. All right, so I've got Emmy with me now. And for Emmy, I will just bring out um, this token here. That's Emmy today. Uh, so now it's essentially an escort mission to get Emmy from the shadowy plains back to the northern uh, village where I can drop her off and then go to fight the frigid demon.
that's where I'll leave it today. Um, I'll move the board around, maybe move these cards off screen so that uh, you can see everything. But um, yeah, next time we'll get Emmy back to safety, hopefully. Thanks for watching.